eh, habari yenu jambo karibu sana to my channel it's none other than Sharon aka Wabaraka and you are very welcome to my channel if this is your first time karibu sana feel at home and please make yourself comfortable if you are a returning subscriber you are very welcome thank you for always coming back to my channel and watch my content if you haven't subscribed to my channel please don't forget to hit that red subscribe button subscribing me bure it is absolutely free 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 you don't need to pay anything at all it is absolutely free so like the videos and don't forget to share with all your friends in this channel we do nothing else but real life real issues and real talks to inform inspire and impact so in today's video i'm going to be giving you a story and it's not just a story it's actually based on a uh, real life without disclosing the person or any names because of confidentiality reasons but this is a real life story that i'm going to be giving you and i'm giving you this story so that you can understand what can happen if you fail to accept change of circumstances that can happen in life okay so it is going to be a bit emotional just to warn you if you are an emotional person you may find this uh, emotional and hence the reason why i've got my drink it's just a uh, uh, lemonade and it's got some lemons inside it and cucumber to clear my throat because sometimes when i'm talking my throat goes a bit funny and we take a sip so the story that i'm going to tell you is um about a couple and this couple uh, loved each other so very much so it's a husband and a wife and they were admired very much in the community that they lived in because of how they carried themselves within the community and how they loved each other basically it was they had a marriage that was to be admired by anybody and circumstances changed and life do change issues do happen and it is not exempt to anybody and this is what happened to this uh, lovely couple so one day the wife found out that the husband was cheating on her and when she found out that the husband was cheating she was very distraught she was betrayed or she felt betrayed and issues started there in their relationship they had two lovely children and uh, like i said it was an admirable an admirable couple with a lovely beautiful family that anybody would want to be in um, such a relationship so trust issues started when the wife found out that the husband was cheating and when she attempted to speak to the husband to find out why he would do such a horrible thing to her he refused to communicate with her he refused to have anything to or to explain why he would go and have an extramarital affair outside of the marriage and this bothered this wife so much for a long time until one day she decided you know what i'm going to be the bigger person here and i'm not going to ask anything else because my husband does not want to talk about it and so she let go but the husband carried on keeping quiet in fact the communication completely broke down from that point he moved out of the matrimonial bedroom and he started sleeping on the couch or in the spare bedroom just so that they are not in the same room at any one point and this 
kept disturbing this wife for a long time and when she attempted to ask the husband whether they could seek help or whether they could go to counseling the husband was not communicating he was not saying anything at all to her and so she started sinking into a depression she wasn't understanding herself she couldn't understand that the issues that was going on had nothing to do with her but her husband sadly and so she started sinking into a depression and before you know it she had a mental breakdown and it was so severe that she had to go into the hospital but before we get into that part of the hospital let me just give you a flavor of the events that happened um before this woman ended up in in in, in hospital so one day one of the children i told you they had two lovely children one of the children went and told the teachers that their mom has been very sad she has been crying every single night and the child was very worried that the relationship between the mom and the dad is going to to break down and so as a concerned teacher the teacher did what is right and contacted um, social services to see if there's any help that this family could be given Sadly, a lot of people don't have an understanding of how social services operate and when the social worker turned up at their doorstep wanting to know what is going on because they've received a referral from school, instantly this woman thought that her children were going to be removed and that added an extra pressure on top of what was going on within the family. The husband is still in the house, remember at this time, he's still um, in, the, in the same home, but they're not communicating. He sleeps in a, in, in a separate room, they don't communicate at all. He goes to work, uh, he, he goes to work, comes back and acts as though everything is all right or normal, whilst actually it wasn't. And the woman carried on suffering internally and having a lot of internal pressures and by this time the husband had started telling family members that the wife is 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 mental she's um, acting weird and unfortunately the family gunned against this wife without knowing the full story they started attacking her saying that, oh, he's not looking after our brother, he's not doing the duties as she should as a wife, she's um, a disobedient wife, and then they called her all sorts of names. So it was a very difficult time for this wife who was, at this time, she is afraid that her marriage is breaking down and she can see the reality of the marriage breaking down she has the fear of what's going to happen in the future because she does not know how to react or how to cope with all the circumstances that are changing in her life and she cannot speak with anybody because she has no trust with anybody after being attacked by the husband's family whom she had trusted people that she thought would protect her she had no faith with anybody and so she did not communicate her problems with anybody and as you know when you've got depression and you're not communicating it just adds uh, more pressure depression i keep telling you it's like pumping air into a balloon and uh, at one point if you keep adding air to a balloon it pops and that is exactly what happened so one day the wife came home and she decided, I'm going to attempt to speak to my husband. Whichever way, I will try to do this, but I will. And as soon as she approached the husband to have a communication, 
it was like he was waiting to be spoken to he just had a blowout and completely went ballistic for whatever reason and so they ended up having a very big argument and at this point the husband walked out and he said he's he's gone he has left and he has gone and so now the wife is now left alone with the children in the house crying and wondering now what has happened what am i going to do what is going on she's still not understanding what has caused all this commotion or all this drama so from there um obviously the social worker is still doing an assessment still coming to find out um where the problem is or whether there's any support that can be provided um, and before the before the assessment was completed when the husband walked out this woman had a complete breakdown remember she's now left alone with the children and so the assessment had to look at whether she is capable to look after her children given that she has now had a complete mental breakdown she was asked if she has any relatives and she said she didn't have any relatives do you have any friends that your children can go to in the meantime and she said she did not have any and so a decision was taken that the children's needs were not being met effectively by the mother who at this time was really really unwell remember it started off as a disagreement where she found out the husband was cheating the husband refused to communicate with the woman and she started just going downhill 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 and because she did not seek medical attention or she did not go to hospital to get attention for for the depression it only got worse because she wasn't getting the right treatment that she should be getting and so things started getting worse for her and unfortunately the children were removed from her care because they could not contact the father of the children who the children of the other could have gone to the father but he was an, an uncontactable at that point and when the children were removed you can only imagine the the woman's mental health only got worse it wasn't getting better she has now lost her husband she's lost her children and she's in the, in the verge of losing her home because she's stopped working she's not able to pay the bills and she's receiving red letters so this woman one day um, collapsed in the house and when she collapsed in the house luckily the mailman had come to deliver a parcel and just by god's grace happened to look through um, the window and saw someone lying down on the floor and the mailman thought that is unusual so he knocked he thought i'm going to knock because that doesn't look like a usual situation and when he knocked there was no answer but the mailman could see clearly there's someone lying down on the floor and being known to the mailman the the woman who was alone in the house because the children had been removed at this time had collapsed out of all the pressures or all, all, all the internal pressure that she was going through the mailman called the police and the police came and broke the door and found her unconscious so they called an ambulance and sadly for her where she had fallen there was a radiator for those who live in the uk you understand what a radiator is it's um, one of those heaters in the house that keeps the house warm um, and because the radiator was on it had burned the whole side of the body that she had fallen on so she had to undergo surgery plastic surgery to to um to mend the where she had the bands on the side where she had the bands now 
and I'm telling you, this is a real life story. This is something that has happened in real life. And all this is because the woman was not accepting that the circumstances to her life had changed. And so she needed to adapt, move on and accept what had happened and carry on with her life. So she spent a, a further duration of time in the hospital. She, 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 attended, she was given medical attention, but behind that she also had to undergo a mental health assessment. And the mental health assessment indicated that she was really unwell and so she had to be sectioned. And being sectioned means that she had to be taken to a psychiatric unit where she would receive treatment because of her mental health. She spent some time in the psychiatric unit and when she came out, because she wasn't paying rent when she was in the hospital, the home that she and her husband and their children once lived had been repossessed by housing. So she was discharged into another flat. Luckily the system in the, in the UK is really good she didn't become homeless she was provided with a one bedroom flat where she was discharged from and she started attempting to see whether she can have contact with her children by this time the social workers had contacted the father and they had managed to locate him and he said he would care for the children so the children uh, went had gone to live with the father and the girlfriend that the father was having an affair with so when she came out of the hospital, this woman, and found out that her children are being raised by the same woman that the husband was having an affair with, you can only imagine she had another breakdown, another mental breakdown. She could not cope. She could not accept. And so she had to go back in again um, only a few months after being discharged. She had started seeing her children but it didn't last for long before she got readmitted again in, in the psychiatric unit. But before she got admitted, the reason why she got readmitted is because she tried to commit suicide. She tried to take away her own life. She had lost all reason for living. She had lost all hope. She had lost her husband, lost her children, her children were being raised by another woman. She lost the home that they once lived in. The happy family that everybody admired was completely broken down. And you know this is what the devil does. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And the last step the devil was going to do was to kill this woman. And so she took an overdose because she wanted to kill herself. Fortunately, because she was still receiving community care, she was found again unconscious and rushed back to the hospital and readmitted back into the mental, into the psychiatric ward where she is still is up to now receiving treatment. So, take a seat there. What I'm trying to say is, life is not always rosy. There are times your life circumstances are going to change. And I did another video and I said, if your circumstances change, accept. It is better to live alone and peaceful because of accepting that your life circumstances has changed than to lose your life, lose your sanity because you're so worried about what people are going to say. That's all I wanted to share. At the end of the day, the decision is yours. Choose life or choose death. Baraka.